Hello. Uh, my name is Julie Bush, and today we are going to talk about React Context. Uh, before we dive into this, uh, let's take a look at this web page, which is partially obscured, uh, which feels strongly that context should not be used. Uh, you may uh, perhaps think that it is an opinionated blog, but it is actually the React docs themselves. So, why does context exist in React if we are so strongly discouraged from using it? Let's find out. React context, the forbidden feature. <laughs> so, uh, over the course of this talk, we are going to cover uh, why React context is there, who it is for, and what it can do. Uh, React context is not at all the same as the context of a function in JavaScript. It has nothing to do with the idea of the this keyword. It is particular to the React library. Uh, React context is a way of relaying information to components. It actually works very much like props in that both are objects that store data that can be accessed from within various React components. The difference is that props are passed explicitly uh, you need to write out a prop every time you want to hand it off to somebody. And context is passed implicitly, um, meaning that uh, you don't actually need to pass it through multiple levels to get a context um, bit of information to where you want it to go. Um, so let's take a look at the differences between props and context in code. On the left, uh, in props, you will see that we have a grandparent class set up that is returning the parent component in its render function. And we see that Sally is passed into the parent component as a name prop. Um, then the parent takes the props into its constructor and applies them, and then is returning the child component where the name Sally is passed to the child component uh, via this.props.name. And then finally, the child component takes in that prop via its own constructor and then returns this.props.name in a div. So the result of the left hand side is a div that just says Sally. On the right hand side, uh, the result is going to be the same, but the way that Sally gets down to the final div is uh, much different. So you'll see that in the grandparent class, we have this um, unusual or unfamiliar looking thing uh, called child context types. Uh, what that is saying is that there is going to be a bit of information on the context. You're going to call it name, and name is going to be a string. So this sets up our context so that we know what sort of data to expect. And then below that in the get child context function, uh, we see what that information is actually going to be. In this case, this is where we're telling it, hey, our name in our context is going to be Sally. And then you'll notice that we are still rendering the parent div from the grandparent div, but parent does not have anything passed into it. It is just hanging out by itself. And parent then is also returning child. And again, within parent, no props need to be passed into the child component. But the child component itself has context types, which tells it to look for the context that we created and started passing in the grandparent. It says, hey, you're looking for a bit of information in our context. It's going to be called name, and it's going to be a string. So then our child, via this.context.name, rather than this.props.name, is also able to render a div with the name Sally in it. So uh, that doesn't really seem so scary. So why shouldn't people use context? Well, first of all, explicitly passing props makes it easier to track the flow of information through your app. Um, the philosophy of React is that there is explicit one-way information flow. And um, you may, as the developer, uh, feel strongly that you will remember what information is going where and so on and so forth. Um, and I believe you, 
but uh, perhaps you will want other people who read your code to be able to more easily reason about what is happening and be able to uh, see very simply and clearly what information is moving where throughout your components. Another reason not to use context is that there are definitely better ways of handling state. If you are using context to handle state within your React app, you are just not doing things as efficiently as you could be. There already exist libraries for managing state, such as Redux, and those are definitely a better option for you to use rather than trying to create your own state management system uh, where things could easily get out of hand. And finally, the context API is subject to significant change and may be unstable. Um, it could cease to work. It could uh, change remarkably. It's uh, somewhat risky for you to use it. Uh, you may need to write an entire program based upon having used context and having context suddenly pulled out from under you. So who can use context or who should use context? Uh, context is there, again, because it is a thing that is useful to someone, otherwise who would have spent their time making it. Uh, context is useful to people who are writing libraries. So for example, the writer of a library uh, could use context to write something that will allow us to make use of context while still abstracting context away from us. And also in that case, if a person writing a library is using context, they are the one who has to manage any changes within the context API, not individual developers. So that shields developers from having to worry about rewriting or refactoring large amounts of code um, on an individual basis. So for an example of one such library that uses context uh, to everyone's advantage, let's talk about React Redux. Um, this is a library that we are all familiar with. It is a uh, binding between React and the Redux state management system. And this is a brief example of how context is used within the provider element that um, React Redux gives us so that we can pass our store down to all children of the provider without having to constantly subscribe to it. So you can see that here we've made a class uh, called provider. We are again getting child context and that child context is going to be the store. The information we're passing is this.props.store because we still do need to give the provider a starting point. But then um, you'll notice that the provider is only rendering its children, meaning that it itself is not going to have any visual impact on the proceedings. And then we have made note that the provider is passing on a type of context called store that's going to be an object. So this sets us up to know that that's what we are looking for. And then once we wrap things in our provider, that app container there as the child of the provider is going to be rendered and also have access to the store. You'll remember that in our previous example, the child component had to let somebody know that it wanted the context. It had to say, hey, I'm looking for context. I'm looking for the name. It's going to be a string. And then it was given Sally because it asked for it, essentially. And here you'll see that we are not actually doing that. But recall also that React Redux provides us with the connect function which then allows you to set up your components to raise their hands and say, hey, I want that store. And then the context is what passes that on to that component. So in conclusion, React context is best used by those writing libraries that interact with React. It could fail at any time, but it probably won't go away. And that is according to Dan Abramov, who is a developer who has um, worked with uh, React Redux and also is now on the React team at Facebook. So I believe him. I mean, why not? And it is powerful, but potentially problematic if misused. So React context. Be careful. You've been warned. Thank you. <laughs>